Hi everyone, how are you guys tonight? You guys, it is Thursday evening. You guys are live here on the Dixieville Paint Facebook and Instagram page um, with Brandy. My name is Brandy. I'm with Brushed by Brandy. If you guys don't already, please go follow me on my pages on Facebook, Instagram. I'm on Pinterest and YouTube as well. Um, in fact, I have a new video coming out on YouTube tomorrow, you guys. I have a new video coming out tomorrow. What? So, yeah, brand new. It's a good one too. I really like the piece. It's beautiful. So you guys go uh, subscribe on YouTube and then um, every week I put out a video using Dixie Bell, um, using Dixie Bell paint products, a fully edited tutorial from start to finish. Oh my gosh, that is amazing. It is amazing that I get that done every week. So far so good anyways. Um, so you guys, I paint here live with you guys every Thursday evening. My husband Sean is here with me to answer any questions as we go. Um, if you guys have been following along, we've been working on this little nightstand for the last two weeks now. So you guys got to see it. Um, we prepped our piece. Um, this one snuck up on us and I had put slick stick on it and ended up needing boss. So we did put some boss on the first week. Um, and then we got our base coat on. And then last week we refined our base coat and I've got a really pretty blended finish on here. Um, the detail on this piece is coming from gold leafing. So we're going to put on a little bit of gold leafing tonight. I'm going to talk to you guys about everything you need to know about putting on gold leafing. Okay. So ask me any questions you guys have, but let's go ahead and get started. Um, so I am going to apply my gold leafing over my raw paint. So because I want to apply it, I want to go ahead and I do a light sanding after every coat, which is just a single pass. This is the Dixie Bell sanding sponge, which is a 220 grit. I'm just gonna go ahead and lightly sand this. And that's because once I put my gold leafing on, I'm not gonna have that option anymore. So I wanna make sure that I do it before I put my leafing on. Um, when you sand over darker colors, can you guys see how it got this kind of gray sanding dust on it? Don't worry about that because I'm going to be sealing this paint and we'll seal it tonight. And um, you guys will see that that gets rid of all that sanding dust that I just created. I like that. That's like a no-look sanding right there. Yeah, you like that? Yeah. You want to turn your head and get in there real good. I hope just I saying hi to everyone out there. Yeah, it's super basic. Okay. Um, oh, you guys, before I get started, I need to show you guys something. Can you grab me your... Oh, I have a rag. You want to show them me working? Yes, I want to show, <laughs> <laughs> show Sean doing something. <laughs> anything. Please, do anything. Let me tack off this dust really quick. But there's no music. I know, but I need to show you guys something. Wait, watch. You Wait for it. I'm going to take my apron off. The unveiling. How cute is this? Can you guys read that? It says, I'd rather be watching Brush by Brandy on YouTube. Okay? Doesn't everybody need one of these? And then I was thinking about it. Everybody needs one of these except for me. I'm the only person who would not rather be watching Brush by Brandy on YouTube. <laughs> so... This should say, I'd rather you be watching Brush My Brandy on YouTube. How cute is that? So you guys, I want to say thank you to Emily. Um, Emily sent this to me and it's super cute. She did a really good job on it, you guys. I'm going to post her information on my page tomorrow, but I thought she did a really nice job on it. Um, so go follow me if you want to see where I got that from, but she did a really good job. And thank you so much, Emily. It was really, really sweet. You made my day. Okay. So gold leafing, I have a variety of gold leafing, um, all different kinds from the really cheap stuff from Amazon to actually pretty decent craft store brands that are a little more pricey. So what is the difference? Um, Amazon gold leafing is fine. It works fine. I have no problem with it. I use it all the time, but I do take more precaution with it because I have no clue what it's made of. Um, I'm 99% sure there's nothing even related to gold in it though. Okay. It's lead. Yeah, so that's just be aware that when you're getting that, you have no idea what metal it is you're putting on. And so I am really overly cautious when I use inexpensive gold leafing. Just don't have a Geiger counter around it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that. Okay, this is a little bit more, a little bit higher quality. This is Craft Store brand, a Craft Smart brand from the Craft Store. I like this brand. This is a this is a higher quality leafing, not because it looks any different. Um, it just lays a little bit nicer if i'm doing like large surfaces where i need to lay even gold leafing this is what i would prefer that's not the look i'm going for here so we're going to use the inexpensive amazon gold leafing now i cannot tell you what seller this is from i don't usually even pay attention i feel like you're 
about to tell us you won an award or something. <laughs> yeah, so you're going to see a lot envelope. of... Okay, gold leafing is... You know what they say about glitter and crafting? Gold uh, leafing is the cousin of glitter, okay? It's going to be a nightmare. I'm going to create a huge mess. Don't try to sweep your gold leafing. It just becomes airborne, like little fairy dust of gold. You're going to want to vacuum it. Um, so when I'm done, I will vacuum all of this mess that I'm about to make right now. So... What I envision for this piece is my blend kind of gold goes in a diagonal across the front and I'm going to follow that with my leaf. So it's going to be kind of a random pattern. This is what I envision in my head. Kind of a random pattern, a little heavier down here on this leg and then it's going to get a little sporadic in here and thin out as I get up to the corner and then I'm going to carry it over onto the top again. Okay, so that's the plan we have tonight. So what do I use to attach it with? You have a few options that work. Number one is you can use spray adhesive. Spray adhesive works fine for attaching gold leafing, except you have zero control over where it's gonna go. If you spray your piece with spray adhesive, it's literally gonna go here. Um, so if you wanna cover your whole piece, that's fine. I use spray adhesive if I'm putting it on my hardware. You can gold leaf your hardware. So if I wanted to gold leaf the hardware, I would do that. And some of this may end up in my gold leaf. Um, in which case I would put a little corner of the leafing on the hardware as well, just so it matches the background when it's coming up. I won't know that till I put it on the body and then I'll see where my hardware lies. Can I look at like a postage stamp? Your hardware no. or no. your um, no, spray adhesive? <laughs> the leafing? Yes, it's totally safe. Edible. I'm just kidding. I don't know what's in this stuff. So spray adhesive is fine. What you're looking for is an adhesive that gets tacky quickly. You want that tack, which is when you when you touch it and your fingers stick a little bit, that's what we're going for. You need a tacky adhesive. So I have a couple options that, and we're gonna use both. We're gonna use um, gold leafing adhesive sizing, and we're also gonna apply it with Dixie Bell Gator Hide. So you guys can kind of see the difference between the two. Um, I'm gonna use Gator Hide because you can use your clear coats. If it's what you have on hand, it totally works for applying your gold leafing. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of both. So I'm going to start with my Gator Hide. I'm choosing Gator Hide because Gator Hide sets up faster than the other clear coats. So remember when I talked about I want it to be tacky? If I want tack out of it, I want a, fa a, a clear coat that's going to set up faster. Um, so I'm probably going to use satin on my body, but I'm going to choose Gator Hide as my quote-unquote adhesive right now. Can I take you back a step? Just to, take, take uh, Susan had a, a question. Yeah. If you don't wipe all the dust off from sanding, what's likely to happen? Um... I mean, I, you could affect the adherence of your next coat. You're going to get grit in your paint or your clear coat, whatever you're putting on next. Um, it's so minimal. It's so minimal. I, I really am creating barely any when I do that light sanding. It's a single pass. I'm not creating a whole lot of dust. I'm just knocking down any high points. So you could affect adherence if you don't keep your surface nice and clean. And you could get grit in your next layer. I would say that's the worst consequences of it. So I'm going to start down here on this corner right here and I'm going to go ahead and apply, I'm using an artist brush and I'm just going to apply a little bit of my gator hide. I'm using an artist brush because I want, I want to kind of control where it's going to go. And I'm going to kind of drip it down this leg a little bit and I'll do, I'm going to wrap the corner so it wraps the corner just a little bit. And I'm just kind of paying attention to, I, I want kind of a random pattern. It, you know, my leafing is going to stick to wherever I put something that's sticky on my piece. So I'm just paying attention to roughly where I want it. If I end up with a spot that I don't cover in gold leafing, then it's okay. I just put clear coat on my piece. That's all this is. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of drip it down my leg. I'm going to let this sit for a minute, okay? I'm going to let this sit because I want it to set up so it gets a little bit tacky. I want that stickiness. Right now it's just wet. And then I'm going to come and I'm going to put a little bit more kind of, you know, again, if I don't get this exact, I just want it in the rough spots. I let the leafing kind of control. I'm going to, you'll see when I go to put it on, I let the leafing kind of break apart and decide where it's going to go a little bit. And then, but I just kind of want a rough pattern, you know, a little bit, a little bit abstract. I don't want to go too far because I'm mean, let's stop. I'll probably stop at this half right here um, because I it's going to set up faster than I can work if I get going too far. Okay, so I, I could touch it. It's starting to get a little sticky. Okay, that Gator Hide does set up fairly quickly. 
Some of these spots are a little thinner. I'm gonna give myself a little bit more just so I have time to get my leafing out and talk to you guys at the same time. I don't want it to go too quickly for me. Okay. So that's pretty good. And then I'm gonna take a sheet of my leafing now, anywhere you have sticky on your hands, it's gonna wanna stick to you too. So that's why they give you these tissue sheets in between the leafing. Use that to grab it. Try to not use your hands if possible. And I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna place it on the corner using the sheet to kind of press it down. Now, I don't want these edges where it's like a square because this is a square naturally. So I'm gonna kind of tear the edges of this and I'll save this sheet. See, it's already wanting to stick to where I touched the gator hide. This is what's gonna happen. It's gonna be a hot mess. And I'll tear pieces off and kind of place them. That's the beauty of gold leaf is kind of this randomness you can get with it. So I'm gonna tear off some of these little edges where I want it a little more irregular. I don't want it to look like I stuck a square on there. I'm going to fill that spot in I just tore, get that going up a little bit onto the leg. All right, that's pretty good. And then I'm going to take a soft brush. I have this guy here, and I like this one. This is a makeup brush, you guys. This is a blush brush from the uh, um, drugstore, just a drugstore blush brush. It's got a little bit of paint on it. <clears throat> But it's nice and soft. It's super soft because it's meant to use on your cheek. So these are good. Um, regular gold leafing brushes are fairly pricey, so I prefer to use my these makeup brushes. And then I will just dust off, and anything that has not found a sticky spot is going to come off with this. Okay, so these spots down here, I feel like I do want some, and they came off anyway, so I'm just going to come back and give myself a little bit of adhesive. When it, with adhesive, I mean I'm applying my gator hide. Okay, so I'm just gonna apply that and then I'm gonna come back with this piece that I kind of tore off because it's a little bit random already. And I'm just gonna use this to fill that spot in and let it drip down my legs a little bit. It's a pretty, it's a pretty easy process. You can't really, get this wrong, especially when you're going for kind of a random look like this. It's a little harder when you want a little bit of precision with your leafing, but I like how it breaks up like this. I see I've got this spot right here. It's a little broken up. I probably didn't want it that much. That's okay. I'll just fill it in. All right. And then I'm going to let this hang out, let this set up for a minute, let it really attach into that gator hide. So let's come up here and do this. Now I know that I'm working too slowly and I did too much. So I'm gonna give myself some more to attach to. But look at how pretty the gold leafing is. This is antebellum blue down here, just up against the antebellum. It's really pretty. That rich teal color with the gold up against it. Okay, and then anywhere that I've gotten excess clear coat, excess gator hide that I don't end up putting gold leafing, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna clear coat all this anyways, and then the sheen will be uniform on my entire piece. I'm gonna take another sheet. You do go through a lot of gold leafing. There is um, a fair amount of waste, so expect that if you're cutting it close with material. So I stuck in what I wanna stick, and then I'm gonna kinda of tear off. So I get that random torn edge. I don't want that perfectly square edge. And then I'm just gonna kinda, my fingers are getting sticky. I don't know why that stuck to the sheet. <laughs> See, my fingers are sticky. I'm ending up taking it all with me. Okay, there we go. And I don't want this. This has that square corner on it. So I'm just gonna fill that in. I'm gonna tear this right here, right on that edge, and I can use it. I'll save that because I don't quite see a spot for it yet. All right, let's see. And then let's go ahead and brush away some of this that I know that I don't want. Break, I, I, I purposely try to break up some of these edges 
don't brush my um my adhesive my gator hide is not set up yet so if i over brush this i'm just going to pull it right back off again you know what i just did you guys that was not smart either see that i left my lid exposed now i've got a gold leaf lid okay so i'm going to let this dry a little bit i like these spots that i've got in here where you can see my color are is exposed underneath um, so I'm going to come up and let's work this area a little bit here. But I want to talk to you guys a little bit about adhesive size. So my gator hide works fine for that. Adhesive size is exactly, it's exactly made for gold leafing. So it's going to get tacky really quickly. Um, this little jar, this is a craft store item. This little jar runs, oh gosh, under $10. But this is another option. So I'm going to show you guys this. Now, the, all this does is it gets, it's a, it's just a glue that gets tacky really, really fast. I'll just do a little spot in there and I'm going to keep going with my um, gator hide, but I want to kind of just show you guys that either one can work. And I always like using what I have. I'm going to grab another sheet using the tissue paper. Are you sleeping over there? You're super quiet tonight. No, I'm letting you do your... Do my thing? Your thing. When you're done with this, do you coat it? Yes, I will. We'll talk about coating it because I'm going to coat this whole piece tonight. With you guys <laughs> right here on camera. Wendy. So do you guys lead regular family lives during the day and become ninja painters at night? Yes, we do. Painter. I hear my kids inside going at each other right now, by the way. Let's not uh, make that one plural. Painter. We, we, yeah, we usually, uh, they know the routine. They wanted to play games. We turn the internet off so that they cannot be on the internet. Turn all, we turn the power yeah, we off. We turn the lights off. <laughs> Give them no food. Uh, <laughs> they know the routine. Like Throw a T-bone at them. They know. Oh, it's Thursday night. Huh, Mom? Yep, it's Thursday night. They come out here. They know they can come in and out quietly if they need anything. They just come out here and sit with us. So sometimes they're out here and you guys just don't know it. Okay, I'm going to keep going up and it's tapering off a little bit as I get up here. I'm back to using my gator hide. And then I'm just going to stick my sheets in there. That's a nice, that one went on really nicely. This kind of random look is really easy if you've never played with gold leafing before because you cannot get it wrong. You really can't. And then I'm going to dust off some of these edges right here where I know that I don't want it. Let these little flyaways happen. I want to break this apart a little more. As I'm looking at it, it's a little solid stripey. I don't want a solid stripe. So that's okay. I can just break it apart. So I'm just being more aggressive with my brushing and that's going to take off anywhere that it's not as attached. All right, I kind of like that. Still feel like I could use some breaks in here, so I'm just gonna kind of create them by getting a little rough with it. My um, gator hide is still not set up, so I can do that right now. Could you do this with stenciling? Yes, you can. All you do is you stencil with whatever you're gonna use as your adhesive, so you would stencil, it, but you need to do it while it's still tacky. If it starts drying too quickly, you're not going to have enough time to get the, the leafing on there. I've done that on camera before. I have a video for it on my YouTube channel. And you just stencil in your adhesive. Um, I think I'm going to add a little bit more down in this corner to chunk it up a little bit. Kind of up here. And going up onto this leg. And I will wrap this around too. Um... But you just do your stencil in your, in your adhesive and then you take your stencil up and lay your leafing on and your leafing is going to stick wherever that sticky, the stickiness that you just created is where your leafing is going to want to stick. Um, and then you can brush it and get a really aged look out of it. You know, if you just be a little more aggressive with your brush. What kind of brush is that again? That's a blush <laughs> brush from the drugstore. So Dang it, I tried. It's a makeup brush. What? What are you trying to get me to say? Blush brush. Rouge? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> the rouge. <laughs> All right, I'm just kind of um, purposely placing some of this in 
where I want this corner to be a little more chunky. So you have your link attached. Your affiliate link is attached to this? Yes, that is my affiliate link for Dixie Belle. <clears throat> so that you can order your the gator hide that we're using right now. Any of the five colors that we put on these uh, nightstands are available there. And then I'm just using inexpensive craft store gold leafing. You can get it on Amazon, on uh, you know eBay. There's any number of places you can find gold leafing. None of it is actually real gold. Dang it. I know. So I'm so sorry. Well, I like that the price doesn't reflect it. If anybody it, but... thinks that they're going to order gold leaf pieces for me and hopes that they'll be worth a million dollars, you are going to be disappointed. Ugh. All right. Kind of like that. I'm going to brush away some of this excess. Not too much. I will brush it away more after that gator hide sets up more. I can brush away more of the excess. Um, how's it look? It's hard because I can't sit back and, and really look at this. Yeah, I think I like it. I want to break up some of these pieces in here so they're not quite as solid. So I'm just using my finger and I'm over rubbing it. Could you wax over this? Um, I would not want to wax over gold. I just don't think wax provides enough protection. That's my thought on it. But that could be a personal preference thing too. I would. I'm gonna put clear coat over it. And now, because you went over the uh, intersect points for the drawers, do you cut it before you open the drawer? No, it's going to tear. It's so <laughs> fragile, you guys. All you have to do is touch gold leafing and it's going to tear right apart. So watch. Like, it's not even going to try to stick there. See that? Go on. It, it's so, so fragile. You can't even touch this stuff. That's it. It's as easy as that. So now I will go right over those. So let's talk about my hardware now. Okay, so my hardware, I painted this one gold, but it's a little bit off in shade. So I would wanna put some leafing kind of right here on this corner so it matches. So this is a case when I probably would just take some spray adhesive. I'm just gonna spray it right here. I'm gonna spray that corner. I'm gonna let it get tacky for a minute. And then I can take a piece of my gold leafing. Uh-oh, Yvonne comes with jokes. Oh. It looks golden. <laughs> and I'm going to place it right onto the corner of this hardware. So you can gold leaf your hardware too. You want a really authentic gold look on your hardware. Same thing. I'll just stick it into all my cracks and crevices. I'm going to tear off some of this excess and save it for other spots. Get my blush brush in there and really work it in. So hardware is really easy to do. And then you can seal over this with a clear acrylic or a clear lacquer. Okay, and so you can kind of see, I need to brush it a little bit more, but I've got, this is a painted side and this is where my leafing is on my hardware. So it's super easy and it gives me a little bit more like gold encrusted look. This is the painted side here and this is the leafing side. So I would just seal this once my adhesive is dry, I would go ahead and seal that. And then it'll look like it's broken off as part of my gold leafing right there. You see that? I love gold leafing on my hardware. Okay, see how easy it was? So I need to let this dry a little bit. So let's let this set up and then we'll come back and we will put some... Um, what are you gonna put over it? Well, we're gonna put clear coat over it, but <clears throat> I need to wipe out this lid because I can't put the lid on there. I know if I put I that, even look at you if I put that in my um, in my gator hide, I'm going to end up with a half a container of gator hide <laughs> that just makes my pieces turn gold. You're going to end up with a not happy Sean. So that was just using gator hide. I just used my gator hide as my adhesive. So let's go ahead and leave that for a few minutes, and we'll let's turn this and we'll put some clear coat on the other sides. And by the time I come back around, we should be able to seal this a little bit. Gator hide sets up nice and quick. And then you can see that I've got gold leaf threw up on my floor down here. Okay, <clears throat> so let's talk about how I'm gonna seal this piece. So um, I love Gator Hide as a clear coat. I usually spray Gator Hide and when I'm brushing or sponging, I love satin clear coat. I think satin clear is just really user friendly. I love the low sheen of it. I love that it goes on in kind of a thick, almost gel-like consistency so this is satin clear and this is a side I don't have any of my leafing on so we're this is um the, the Dixie Belle applicator sponge is what I'm going to use 
Whenever I'm applying um, clear coat with my applicator sponge, I also make sure I have a brush out because I'm not gonna be able to get this sponge. I can kind of squeeze it up into the corners, but when you squeeze it, you're gonna get spots that have a tendency to drip. So I always make sure that I have one or uh, both of these in hand. And that way, if I get drips, I can kind of brush them out, feather them out of the corners. The corners is where you're gonna get tendency to drip. So I took my blue applicator sponge. I reused this over and over. You can see mine's got some, I don't know what happened there. <laughs> <laughs> someone, um. someone tried to chew on it. Um, you can use either side of it. It even has these grooves in here, which are perfect if you're doing like a spindle because you can go right down your spindle and that fits right in the center. So you can apply your clear coat. You can also apply paint with these too if you're painting spindles. You can see how it fits right down the center like that. Judy has a very important question. Of course, of course. it sounds <laughs> I'm really important. Giggling. <laughs> Apparently for her, the camera is zooming in on your head. Oh. <laughs> She's wondering if it was happening to everybody that else. That sounds awful. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> or the other is the, a very popular one. Um, where's Bob? <laughs> <laughs> what about Bob? <laughs> I'm kind of bummed, you guys, because he had like a base, like a plate, and it fell down in my wall. I got to get one of the kids to get in there with their little baby hands and reach down in there and try to make them think there's not spiders or something inside the wall. <laughs> okay, so I am going to use my applicator sponge. It's damp, so I just ran it under the faucet and then I wring it out until not a single drop is coming out, but my, my sponge is wet. I can feel it, it's wet. You can see the water on my hand. And then they made the mouth of the container just wide <gasps> enough to fit your sponge inside. Now, it, cart before the horse. Do you really think they made the container yes. around that or they made that around the container? They did. They planned it. Dixie Bell's genius. Ask him for a friend. Silent, silent genius. <laughs> and then I usually will go around my edges like this and I kind of make my little square so that it's all framed out. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to run it all in linear strokes. So for a little side like this, I really don't need to refill my sponge. I'm gonna give myself a little tiny bit more just to make sure I have coverage because I have a few spots down there I could see. And then I'm gonna come back and make sure they're all running the same direction. Satin is nice and workable. It has a nice long open life. So see how I'm able to go over this a couple times. And it goes on with an almost like blue tint to it. So I can see where I've put it. Plus the sh I can tell by the sheen and the light. I just need to get in that crack down there. But you can see how easy that was. I just sealed my paint on this side. And I wanna make sure I get up under this lip and across this lip. And that side is pretty much sealed. I'm gonna do my legs. So same thing, only I'm giving myself very little of my clear coat and I'm just gonna run my sponge up the leg. This um, gold leafing on the floor is going to plague me tonight. So I'm not going to go all the way down to the floor because if I touch it, I pick up a bunch of gold leafing. It is like literally the devil. You're going to want to clean that up, obviously, before you go into your next step. Okay, so I've got a leg done. Going through and sealing this is remarkably fast. When I sand it, I did not sand the back, so I'm just going to give this a light sanding. Okay, and then I'm going to tack off, this is a damp rag, I'm just going to tack off the dust with my damp rag. And if you guys, you know, that step is completely optional, but I can feel that difference in my paint when I do that. Every single time I run my hand over it and I can tell the difference, and that's why I do it. I know it makes it just that little bit more smooth. Okay, I'm going to get in here to this corner right here. <clears throat> So yes, really quick, you did dampen the sponge. Yes, my sponge is damp. <clears throat> I did that off camera because my sink is across the room, but I did bring it over here. It's super damp. It's, I mean, you're not gonna get a drip out of it because I, I wring it out as much as possible. Okay, so I did my basic outline. You wanna make sure that it doesn't gather in these creases over here because as it starts drying, your clear coat's gonna start sagging and create drips. So make sure it doesn't gather in the creases. And then see how it kind of goes on nice and white. I can see where it's going. So I want to make sure that I just get coverage first. And then because I've got that little bit of playtime, I can come feather out. I don't want to have, let me show you guys what it looks 
what will make your clear coat streaky too. Okay, if, my, if it looks like this going on, can you see that? Yes. You can see that? Okay. See how it's thick here? It's thin here. I've got a spot I missed here. It goes a little thicker here. That's If it looks streaky to you going on, it's going to dry streaky too. That is not going to solve itself as it dries. So I try to make it as even as possible. Any places that it overlaps, I use just a really soft hand to overlap them. And then I've get, got a nice even coat all the way across. Because if it looks streaky going on, it's going to look streaky when it dries too. Now these, I have these little grooves on the corner, so I'm just going to take my brush and run my brush just like that. Run my brush up the groove, and that way I don't have any clear coat that has gathered in that groove. Super easy. And then across the top, I'll do the same thing. You don't want to be... Uh, pressing down on your sponge so that it almost squeezes out. You don't need to press down on it. I just let the sponge ride its way across. That little bit of water helps it to glide. It also helps to fill the sponge up um, so that your sponge isn't filling with... You okay? Yeah, you're okay. You're oh, okay. You look like you were in a panic all of a sudden. You're okay. Okay. If you, if you press down on it, you're going to get globs where it squeezes out from the sponge. I also rinse my sponge out in between each application. So even if I'm going to need to do multiple applications tonight, and I will, I usually do two on a body and between us, you know, four or so on a top, I like my tops extra protected. Um, so... I will do multiple coats on here, just repeating the same process. I'll let it dry at least a few hours in between. And then if I wanna come back, but make sure you rinse your sponge out. Don't try to save this in a Ziploc or anything because it will start to dry in your sponge and you'll start getting white bits in your clear coat. Nobody wants that. Let's turn it and do this other side. And then we're gonna be back to our front. And I think our, I think our gator hide should have set up. Okay, so same thing, I just created that little box and then I'm gonna come here and just make sure it's nice and even, that I've got coverage everywhere. Come up under my lip. It's remarkably fast to seal your paint. And then this is where I'm kind of using just a soft touch. I, I have my finger just kind of here and I'm just letting the sponge write. I'm not pressing down on it. It's just the sponge writing it. And that gives me nice even strokes. I think, I think satin is super user friendly. I always recommend satin if you've not used clear coat before. It just, it doesn't have barely any caveats to it. It just goes on really nice and easy. It's very hard to get wrong. Okay, so I think this is dry enough. I can see some sheen difference. Like here I had some gator hide and I didn't end up putting leafing there, but that's okay because it's gonna be solved when I clear coat this. So, so if you ran satin over it, would it it's gonna change the sheen or not if you came back with gator hide and put gator hide on top of that? On the okay, if I if you layered it, if, if you basically put satin clear on it. Yes, great question. Okay, let's talk about that. I actually recommend if you're gonna use gator hide, putting a coat of satin underneath. Because gator hide dries so quickly. So if you're putting satin on the or if you're putting gator hide on the raw paint, you've got to combat the gator hide drying quickly plus the porous paint. So you've got porous paint sucking it up and it's drying quickly. It's really easy to get streaks that way. Okay, so I think a lot of people have that where you can't work it fast enough. Um, can you delete, just delete it? You should be able to delete it. Touch the screen and try to... Okay, so, um, so what I recommend is putting a coat of satin down first and that creates a barrier. So then when you're putting your gator hide over top, you're putting it over top of the satin. You know, can you hand me my phone? Yeah. Hang on one sec, guys.
Is Dixie Bell on? Here, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Dixie Bell. Hey, that's probably not going to want to be here for long. All right. I'm just going to discontinue it. I'll have to take them off. Okay. I am discontinuing the um, Instagram, Instagram broadcast because there was a troll in there. Me too. So it's off. Zero tolerance for that stuff. I'll tell you that much. We work in social media. It is not easy, you guys. So I have zero tolerance for trolls. Okay. As far as sealing goes, I usually recommend that you put a gold leaf sealant over your gold leaf before you put your clear coat over it. And that is because a lot of these, not knowing what metal it is, can um, uh, discolor underneath a clear coat. And because I don't know what they are, I prefer to just use a metal leaf sealant over top and then I will wipe my clear coat over that. So I just take my metal leaf sealant made specifically for this purpose and then it creates a barrier. So I know that whatever um, I put over top, this is not gonna discolor the top of this leafing. I have no clue what this metal is made of. It's, I know it's not gold. I know it's not gold. If it has even a percentage of gold in it, though, it can it can discolor. Um, I'll tell you how I know that because it happened. Um, I put gold leafing in my house, and I um, put clear coat over it, and it turned green. <laughs> it really does happen. Thankfully, it wasn't some place. I it wasn't a place that I kept it, so it was an easy fix. But just be aware that that can happen. So I seal them with my gold leaf sealant. Where do you find that? This is an Amazon craft store item. Another one, same place you buy the leafing, will have a, a leafing sealant. And then, see, I'm just concentrating it where I have the leafing. It dries clear. And then once I put my clear coat over the top, it's going to match the sheen on everything. Even though I'm using a different sealant in just these spots. So that's all I do. I would put my gold leaf sealant on. Let me close this up. <clears throat> and then I'm going to go ahead and dry that really quick and we'll put our clear coat right over the top of that. And again, what are you using for clear? Um, that was gold leaf sealant and I'm putting satin clear coat over, all, over the body of this entire piece. Another thing, um, if you try to put sealant, just your water-based clear coats over, right over the gold leafing. Some of them have an oil on it and it will bead up your clear coat. You'll know that right away. It won't even accept the clear coat. It will bead it up right away. This, I, I would say this probably would do that, this brand. Um, a lot of those cheap ones do that. So I seal them with the metal leaf sealer and then I can put my, um, my Dixie Bell clear coat right over the top of that. But you'll know right away because it'll just bead up. It won't even try to take the clear coat. And that's on the low heat setting, right? Yeah. And keep it moving. Anytime you're drying paint or anything, keep it moving so it doesn't get it too hot in any one spot. Keep it far enough away. You will bubble your paint. If you keep it on for too long, a heat gun will bubble your paint. Um, I don't like to accelerate the processes. If, if you're trying to dry paint with a heat gun, um, you're not allowing your Dixie Belt to self-level. You don't get the smooth results if you dry it with a heat gun that you get if you let your paint just dry naturally. Okay, I'm going to pull these drawers out so that I don't get them gummed up in between. And then I'm just going to fill my sponge with my satin. This is nice and dry now, and I can just clear coat right over the top of it. So we're going all the way across. Get my top lips here. And I'll pull this out and do inside the frame so that's sealed as well. Pull this out. Okay, and I'm going to pull my second drawer out. Again, all this is dry. It's nice and attached. Nothing's coming off anymore. Make sure you dust off any little pieces, but going over it with that sealant also seals those in too, anywhere that it might have been like a loose little edge or anything. Uh, Carol mentioned you didn't seal the leg. Oh yeah, I need to. I think I need to turn it, and then I don't have. Then you guys don't have as good of a view, so I need to turn it because it goes a little bit onto that side too. So I'll turn the whole piece, but I haven't sealed that part yet either. Random, but can you fix a streaky top coat? Yeah, you can with another top coat with another coat. 
put another coat on it. Um, sometimes it may take a few coats. Um, you do a light sanding in between, come back and do another another coat of it. You can buff it out. I don't usually buff my clear coats because I don't, I, I, I've never really had a need to. But you can come back with a fine, fine, grit, fine grit abrasive and you can buff it and try to get those out. But I, I just do another coat. I just put another coat on. And just be really cautious about how you're um, applying your clear coat. So a few things that can affect clear coat. Right now, temperature and humidity are huge. Clear coats like to be a little bit warm. If I know that I'm going to clear coat something, I store all my products in my garage. It gets cold out here. I will bring them inside the night before and let them acclimate so they're nice and room temperature. And then when I go to apply them, they go on so much easier. So a little bit warm if your weather is really wet, really wet. I mean, raining, you've got your, you're applying it out in the garage, the garage door is open. You know, it's going to, you're going to trap moisture in there. It's not going to dry as fast. It's so consider those things. Um, how you're applying it, of course, spraying makes it a world easy, easier to avoid streakiness, but watch how you're applying it. Um, don't overwork your clear coat. Just do that single pass, let it dry. You can fix whatever you need to fix in another coat. Now, really quick, can you just go over the five colors that you have on this piece? Yes, good question. Okay, so I, it starts up here with fluff. Let me put my drawer back in so you can see them all. I know it was asked earlier and I apologize for not getting yeah, to it. Yeah, I apologize too. So I've got fluff up in the corner, the gulf, mermaid tail, antebellum blue, and midnight sky. Okay, so those are my five colors. Um, fluff, the gulf, mermaid tail, antebellum blue, midnight sky. Um, if you guys want to catch the um, two videos that we did previously for the same exact piece, I posted them on my Facebook page at Brush by Brandy today. There's a post for this live tonight and it includes links to the previous two videos so if you want to see it all the way through this is the ending this is going to be my final look this is where this piece comes to comes to an end once i put my hardware on this is what happens when you have 300 plus eyes in the sky you have a drip over here oh, on the do corner. I? <laughs> thanks there <laughs> fpj awesome. oh my gosh good looking you. out so I'll just take my brush and I'm just going to brush that drip out. So much easier to catch while it's wet. So if I if I don't have 400 people watching it for me, I will come back. Well, you didn't. I will wait. You only had 300 oh, and change. Yeah, let's not round up. Underperforming tonight. Yeah. So I, need I to can't get, even look I at you. Get this leg too. Um, but I will come back before my clear coat has dry and I just check all around my piece. Give it a few minutes. And come back and check it. Don't just leave it for the night or anything because then they're going to dry and it's really hard to get out those drips. You've got to, um, I usually take a razor blade and I scrape them off and then I sand it. And I touch it up with paint if I need to and then come back and clear coat it again. It's not fun to have to touch up drips in your clear coat. Deborah, never be afraid. <laughs> she was afraid to bring it up. Oh gosh, no. I always, we'll I, throw the I camera across the room. You know what happens, you guys? I'm on here talking at the same time usually when you're painting you get into your flow and you're just paying attention to your piece but talking at the same time like I lose you know like I lose that connection with what I'm doing so I really I appreciate that stuff I just like that you talk so much in these videos because then you're really quiet in the house well it's awkward if you guys are just watching it's kind of selfish and nobody's talking I'm not a talker at all um, I am going to take a little bit of my gold gilding wax though and I'm going to put it down here on some of these little curly cues on so these have um your traditional French provincial leg. I'm going to dust off some of my um, gold leafing bits that fell there. And I'm going to use some of my gold gilding wax on. Just a quick shout out. Cheryl was watching you for two hours and drinking coffee this morning. Oh my God. Just binging. It sounds like a long morning, Cheryl. My apologies. <laughs> <laughs> Someone sent me a video. Oh, I know. It was Sally. Sally Jacobs, one of our retailers. And she was watching it on her 70 inch TV. Like, do you know what it's like? It's hard to, to watch yourself on camera. But then to see it on a 70 inch TV and I'm like, oh, I missed this spot on my makeup. I really need to improve my skincare routine. All that stuff comes to light. So I'm just taking a little bit of my gold gilding wax on my finger. I'm just going to dip my finger in the container and wipe it off just a little bit on my finger. And I'm going to follow these little curls here. And I like gilding wax for this because I'm going to watch. I'm going to drag it up this leg and it's going to fade out because it's a wax. So it gets that nice little fade. I'll do that again. I'm just going to follow the curly cue and then I drag my finger up and where it ends is where it ends. Wait, one more time. Okay, let's do, let's do it again. 
So I'm going to do this one over here. So just this part's nice and, and what's the word I'm looking for? Like potent. And then I'm just going to drag it up the leg and it's going to naturally fade out. So that's something people always ask me why I like wa the wax over the mousse or when I would use wax versus mousse. When I want these smeary effects, the wax smears like an oil pastel. Well, it's an oil. It's an oil-based wax. So it smears like an oil. It gets smudgy and smeary. And um, the mousse stays really potent all the way through. So I just kind of smeared it. It goes up the leg. It ends right about in here in a really natural ending. So I like that. It just brings out these little curly cues. I don't want them full-blown gold leaf. Um, and that just gives a little bit of gold to the legs. And I'll do that all the way around on all four. You can use the gold um, gilding wax on your hardware too. Or if I wanted to hit like this little skirt right here, this doesn't really have too many moldings. And I think I want this to be the star of the show. I don't really want to take away from that. So I'm just, this is a very little touch that I'm going to add here. Uh oh, Christine says, how does that work when the message pops up? Watch live on TV. <laughs> Oh, it does. You, you got to commit. It does, huh? You got to commit. Oh my gosh, I didn't even think about that. Wrong time to have a failure of commitment. Yeah. You got to make it happen. It. I forgot. It, you kind of feel like you have to, huh? All in. Oh, we got another drip back leg. Do we? Man. That... I, I'm just reading comments. So if they're lying, then... Right there? Yep. I'll get that one. The there we go. My finger. You know what else? I didn't go over this this corner right here with my brush, how I did on the other side. So I'm just going to hit that with my brush. And that just feathers them out. And then any that were even tempted to drip are stopped now. Oh, they're going the other way now. They're afraid. Yeah. Thank you, guys. I do really appreciate it. If I was out here on Don't my own. Don't be afraid. If yeah. I was out here on my own, I would totally just be in the zone and paying attention. I'm going to brush out this little crevice right here, too. There's another one. All right. No tolerance for drippy clear coats. We don't do that. I wrote a blog post one time. Have you guys ever read the book, If You Give a Mouse a Cookie? And you know, it's like a it's like a slippery slope. He gives the mouse a cookie and all these crazy things start happening. And that happened. I had a drip in my clear coat. So I wrote it like that. If you have a drip in your clear coat, and then all of a sudden I tried to get it off and I scratched the paint and I tried to touch up the paint and I knocked over the chair and then the back of the chair broke and then... You know, That's I never had to, happened. Yeah, this it was all true. <laughs> it was all true. And then I had to repair the back of the chair and then something else happened. It was like, I should have just left the stupid drip in the clear cup. This is why when you ask me, does it look okay? And I just yeah. say yes. Yes, it's fine. I, I know what's that's what's gonna the, come. That's the know when to quit thing. Same I think gilding wax is another one is another hard one to know when to quit because you want to keep adding it because it's so easy and so pretty. All right. Last one onto the back. I need to still seal these legs. I know that I didn't do them, but I don't want to do it with this gold leaf on the floor. I'm going to end up with gold leaf in my clear coat, and I don't want that. So I need to clean up my area first, and then I will get these sealed. But this is fun. I love putting gold leaf accents. It's so easy. I'm just using my finger. It's um, so easy to watch you. The gold leaf is uh, will seal permanent in 24 hours so you don't have to clear coat it but when it's little details like this I will put my water-based clear coats over it with no problem I don't have an issue now if I was coating my whole piece in in gilding wax I probably would not seal it because it's an oil-based wax but little details like this I don't have any problem and I seal them all the time all right you guys what do you think so we just did this entire piece together over the last few weeks super cute I am going to continue my gold leaf up onto the top and then you guys have been catching sneak peeks at the dresser, which is right next to it. I finally got some paint on that yesterday. It's a really rough base coat. Really rough. Really rough. It looks terrible. Um, that's just my base coat. That was just laying out my basic colors. Where do I want them? What does the flow look like? Get coverage over the, um, over the white boss that I put on that piece. And now that that's all done and figured out, I can come through and I'll really perfect it. And we did the same process on this piece here. All right, so super cute, huh? I like it. But that's gonna be basically a larger version of what we just did here, and I'll film all that one on camera for YouTube as well. All right, you guys, do you guys feel like you could do, oh my gosh, it's late. Um, do you guys feel like you could do gold leafing? Super easy way to add a really bold accent to some fun colors, looks great against the blues. 
Um, and it didn't, it's not hard. It's not hard. I just used a little bit of my gator hide on there. All right, I'm gonna pop off you guys. Um, again, if you don't already go subscribe on YouTube, I have a new video coming out tomorrow, um, a full tutorial on a mid-century modern piece. I'm using Dixie Doll silk, really pretty piece. Um, so go catch that, subscribe on YouTube. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram. Um, you guys, thanks for hanging out tonight. I'm sorry to Instagram that we cut your broadcast short, but I will catch you guys next Thursday. Have a good weekend, you guys.